okay. I guess, uh, how, do, how do we start it? Hi, everybody. This is Big Inklevich. And this is Rish Outfield, and happy Halloween. Yeah. It's very Halloween-esque today in here. This is, this is interesting. Yes, we are uh, actually recording a place we've never recorded before. Maybe no one has ever recorded before. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. You have to keep that up. <laughs> it's good stuff. This is our Halloween episode, and I have been super excited to bring this to you. Um, and I, from the response on Facebook when I mentioned we were doing this, one of the people that I know <laughs> is also excited about yeah. this. That's a bigger response than usual, too, which is nice. I guess Halloween really brings them out. Yeah, sadly, you were not one of those people <laughs> that was really excited. Do you want to sort of set the stage okay. for people of what this episode is going to be? Or, or you know, I will do my know. best. I mean, you know more of it because it's your thing. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so this is our special episode. Basically, we, um, we're, we're recording on location. We, I actually packed up all of our stuff because we wanted to get the best recording that we could. Often we just use the Zoom, but today I brought all the good stuff, uh, the, the high-quality mics. Big, heavy mics, the nice ones. We're in the middle of the room. Oh, wait. I didn't want to give away where we were yet. Uh, or, uh, or should I just go right ahead? Well, we've got to give it away at some point. We're, yeah, we're on location. We've got the nice stuff because we really want to get a good recording just in case. Yeah. What was that? Oh, don't that start that yet. That over. wasn't... Oh, no, okay. What, that was just you messing with the cord? Okay. That was sorry. me pulling the cord, yes. Yeah, I've heard about you and pulling the cord. Uh, well, it was the joystick that I like to handle. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing is, uh, f- in honor of Halloween, of this, that most special of days, to, to Lord Satan anyway, uh, <laughs> we are... <laughs> maybe I should uh, watch what I say. Huh? Yeah, seriously. We yeah. are recording from a genuinely haunted well purported to be haunted house a virtually haunted house <laughs> virtually uh what's the other thing that they mean the opposite of literally that uh, figuratively figuratively ha- yeah that, i don't think that what works. people yeah neither of them do really i guess purported is better a- ostensibly haunted yeah, house. There you go Okay, so I've, t- I've talked to you guys before. If you have ever, not if you have ever listened to the show. If you've ever listened to the show, you've heard the word chalupa and that neither of us have confidence in our writing and that Big had lots of sex when he was younger. But if you've listened a lot to the show. I was having sex in high school. That's right. Haven't done that one in a long time. No, we had to retire. It just, <laughs> so Joey and the rest of the cast of Friends got a little old. They have. Isn't that weird? <laughs> oh, poor Courtney Cox. She's. Had, uh, what do you call it? Um, Double bypass? No, the... Facial uh, reconstruction? No, well, facial reconstruction is what you have after an accident. She's, she's oh, had okay. some Plastic work Plastic surgery? Done, and then, yeah, immediately, because it it never looks right. Right. Immediately she regretted it and said, oh, I shouldn't have done this, and I should have aged gracefully and all that stuff. And I wonder, though, if suddenly she had looked 30 again... She would have if been like, yeah, have, no, this is right. No, yeah, I, I, that's, that's right my Right as guess. rain. Anyway, gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I've, I really want to stick to the I was going to complain the about the fact that Jennifer Aniston is somehow pregnant. Is she really? That's what I heard. I think my wife told me that. She's, She's like, older than us. Yeah. Dude. How can that be? Like Bridget like, Jones' baby or something <laughs> like that. Nobody wanted to see that either. <laughs> if you've listened a lot to the show... I sometimes, or at least I used to, talk about my uncle's house. Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about it, I think, on previous year's Halloween episodes. So if you're a fan of the 13 Nights of Halloween, for example, you've probably heard stories. Right, and this is basically the one night of <laughs> Halloween episode that we're doing. But, gosh, I, I, I hope that this episode ends up being something special. Yeah, that'd be really cool if um, we got something. But yeah, to make a, a long story short, they the, they moved into this house five years ago, four years ago, I don't know when, and he was able to get the house cheap because nobody wanted to buy it. He was able to get the house really cheap because nobody in the neighborhood wanted to buy it. And I guess there's such a thing as full disclosure that 
real estate people are supposed they're they're required to tell you if there's been damage to the house they're required to tell you if something a miss has happened in the house. <laughs> They're not allowed to, to conceal that anymore. Like so that they, somebody had an episode of explosive diarrhea or something? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just like, okay, this bathroom was once filled with dongs. You know, you don't, <laughs> you don't want them to know that, but apparently legally you have to disclose that to the potential buyers. And I guess what happened is, and I don't know even how, how many years ago it was, my family lived in this house and dude i feel weird saying it in this house yeah it's it's, it's kind of creepy to give the history of the house in the house it, it wasn't such a big deal when we were just sitting in my car parked somewhere uh heavy petting but uh I, wait wait i'm sorry what nothing go on uh, but but I suppose that the real estate agents have told this story in this house before. Yeah. And so it's not so weird that I'm doing it. But a family lived here and there was a son. And I I don't know if it was drugs. I don't know if it was mental illness. I don't know if it was PTSD and you know, he had been in the military or whatever. But he had a breakdown or, a, you know, he snapped. I mean, hell, it could have been voices talking to him that told him to do this. But he... That would be mental illness, I think. Oh, unless you mean there was a previous something even before that. This house maybe even has a longer history. Okay. That's exactly what I was getting at, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I, ooh, I'm scaring myself. I love this. This is, this is why I wanted to do this episode, guys, is because the ambience, the... I mean, something about being here makes it more real and yeah. makes it more... It's too bad we don't do a video podcast because then you could see, but that's not our thing. So sorry. And yeah, people have asked us to do a video podcast. This would have been the one. Yeah, this... it would have been. But yeah, no. Um, he broke down and he got a gun. And I don't remember how I told the story before. I don't. It might have been a shotgun. It might have been a rifle. It might have, might have been a pistol. I don't know. But he went to his mother's bedroom where she was sleeping and he shot her in the bed. He went to his little brother's room. And the little brother was a little kid, like five, six something years old, and blew him away, shot him. And then he went down to the basement uh, and killed himself. And I don't know. Gosh, I, sh I wish I had researched this a little bit more. I don't know if the neighbors heard the shots or if it was one of those where two days later people wondered why... Nobody had seen this family, and they went over uh -huh. to investigate. But anyway, that happened in this house. And so my uncle was able to get it. Yeah, when it went on the market after that, it was not uh, not getting scooped up like hotcakes. Yeah, I think it sat for a year or, or more empty. And the owners were just like, you know, just whatever, any offer that can be made. Anyway, the, my uncle heard about the house and said, I... I, you know, I, I don't have a lot of money, but, I, you know, I'll offer this. Uh, and the real estate agent said, oh, you know, well, I'll take your offer to the the owner. And John, my Uncle John said to the real estate person, OK, but one thing, my wife can never know what, what happened. happened. My wife can never hear the story that you told me. Um, but otherwise, she would freak out and she would say, no, we can't we can't live here. And so for they moved in, and for years, she lived. Oh my gosh! Did you hear? That was a weird noise. What was that? Okay. Well, sorry. Let me let me briefly skip ahead. We are alone in this house because my my aunt Charlene finally heard from one of the neighbors what happened in this house, and she confronted John about it. And I guess she had had spooking spooky experiences or or i don't know freakouts or whatever through the years that they'd been living in this house and had just chalked it up to whatever well to, gas. to the house settling or whatever like uh -huh. whatever that, that sound that, just that was i don't probably just i don't imagine settling. that that was a ghost but once she heard the story from the neighbor she was just like that that wasn't the house settling or whatever. There was a reason I was hearing those sounds. It's just like, we are out of here. We are not living here anymore. And so they left. 
It's not even in a week. It has six days? It'll be a week on Thursday. They left this house. And so it's still got, like, the furnishings and stuff. They just basically bought, packed up their clothes and toothbrushes and, you know, that kind of stuff. There's still food in the fridge and all that stuff. And Which I is guess good, because John... I'm planning on going by there later. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they're going to put it on the market as soon as they got all the stuff out. But I said to John, I was just like, well, before you sell it, we've got this podcast my friend Big and I and we and Halloween, and Halloween coming is coming we need up. an episode yeah. I mean it was it was perfect it was kismet you know I was just like could we do an episode where we would go to the place at night and, and do an episode and he he was weird about it and I wondered if he doesn't know what a podcast is or if you thought there was something kinky going on because it's just like oh, are you sure you want to spend I, I don't know man you, so wanna... you guys are just going to go there and do some heavy petting aren't you like we do in the car when we're recording <laughs> but yeah I could tell that he, he was sort of on the, the fence of whether he should let us do this or not and, and I said well, well dude what's the problem would you would you want to be there as like a chaperone or as like a special guest on the show and, and he and you can tell some of the stories that have happened in this house and he he wouldn't do it he's like absolutely not and i said but john you've told me tons of stories what if i just brought the microphone over to your house uh, well to the the apartment they're staying at his boss has two places because he got divorced uh-huh. and split it up and then she went and found some other dude and is living with him and so he currently maintains two places and so the family is there uh, and I said, well, John, I'll just bring a, a microphone to your house, to that apartment. <laughs> Not and, the house here. Yeah, house. you know what I'm saying, though. Uh-huh. And he wouldn't do it. And I don't get it because I've told you, he's told me dozens of stories about this place. Right. He loves to tell the stories. And I mean, I, I always kind of got the impression that he enjoyed trying to scare me with uh-huh. the stories and all that. But now I'm wondering... Uh, maybe I'm wondering if if maybe the stories were made up, or I mean, why? What would change? Why would you not want to tell the stories in a uh, uh, to other people? I I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe he finally got found out by Charlene, and so he's all worried about the extent of that kind of stuff getting out. He doesn't want you know. The, here and there, people that we know actually listen to the show. I mean, it's really seldom, but. You know, sometimes you don't want to, you know, put it out, out in stone, put it out there on the internet. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a no. That's and a the fear internet that both of is us forever. Had. That's as a they good point. Say. Yeah, it's possible that you lose credibility if your employer hears you talking about believing in in spooks and stuff like that. See, I I just used the word spooks, which is a racial slur, and somebody <laughs> could say, "Hey, you know, we've got you on tape saying that you can never be president now." Well, I'm sorry. I guess I'd have to say slightly more. And I could still be president. Uh, sorry, let me change the subject. Yeah, oh, that's, that's too scary of a subject to yeah. be on. Let's get away from that. Anyway, he, he refused. And, and it's too bad because I thought, well, we'll have a lot of content for this episode. Of basically, just John telling stories about this house. Mm-hmm. And sadly, what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to tell you a couple of the stories. Although, I, I forgot. I've got my cell phone right here. Okay, this is me setting my cell phone down. Charlie, my aunt, Charlene, is... I gave her my number and I told her to do it, okay, between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight to call and we'll just put her on speaker and she can tell like any... What's just so weird? Because she's the one that freaked out. John wasn't. She's the one that says, we've got to get out of here. I'm not going to live another... spend another night under this roof and yet she's okay to call and tell me about it yeah that is interesting i guess i'll have to pin him down and find out why exactly maybe he doesn't know she's going to do this may I, yeah maybe he's still worried of some kind of backlash from her i don't know yeah yeah I, I, apparently it may have sort of hit the fan too when she found out that he had known this for years and kept it from her and and see i've not been married I don't know how much of a deal breaker that sort of thing is. It can be a pretty big deal breaker from what I understand. I mean, it's certainly... I mean, I'm not married either, so I don't know, but... Right, but you <laughs> were married and your deal got broken and something broke it. <laughs> but 
I don't know. Is it, is it a big enough deal that she, you would that she would feel like he endangered her children? She got two kids, mm-hmm. and I suppose it depends on how much of a believer you are in this kind of crap. You know what I'm saying? See, like this is what I did in preparation for our <laughs> our escapade today. Uh, I've been listening to a podcast that Senor Brian Lincoln has mentioned, I believe, several times before. It's called The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Basically, it's, you know, it's it's all about skepticism and being able to look at things with, you know, without emotion. You know what I'm saying? Not, not just letting your instincts or your emotion, but actually looking for evidence and that kind of stuff before you just start taking kelp pills and assuming that that's going to cure you of cancer or whatever the heck it is that uh, Dr. Oz is talking about this week. And so, yeah, you know, I've been I've been listening to that kind of stuff and, you know, learning about stuff like confirmation bias and, uh, you know, various uh, critical thinking kind of tools. And, And did you hear something? I think I did. Just a second. Sorry. Is that coming from here or is that outside? I don't know. I, I'm not. That's probably just the house settling kind of noises. You know what I'm saying? It just sounds like a kind of a creak or a. Th- Have you ever had mice in your house? Um, yeah. And like heard that kind of weird scratchy noise that they'll. Well, yeah, like make in the, on walls. the walls. But that's such a tiny little noise. This sounded like. And. Again, I, am I feeding my own delusion? <laughs> it sounded like footsteps uh-huh. on the stairs. Yeah, see that. Now we're you and I. We are in the main room. What do you, would you call this room? The living the living room. room. Okay, I guess we uh, live here. But the but we're on the dining room table, so maybe this is the dining room. I don't know. Okay, it's but just it's, one big room. Yeah, it's it's like a great room. I think they call those great rooms. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I'm not I making that up. Remember, uh, your ex girlfriend's bedroom was was known as a great room for mm-hmm. a long, long time. It's because I was there a lot. The uh, but we were just sort of in the center <laughs> of the house, and it's a, a, a first floor. There's no upstairs. It's just one floor, and then the basement. And we're, geez, how far from the, the steps of the basement would you say? Fifteen feet, yeah, fourteen. It's not far. It's a, you okay. could make it in three seconds or less. <laughs> And yeah, you know, unfortunately, we Do you we've feel got... weird having your back turned to that basement? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we're not stupid. We've got the lights on. Uh, yes. I mean, yeah, if we had, like, brought candles and we were in the dark, <laughs> I don't think I would have been brave enough to do that. And, and certainly not brave enough to have my back to a, any door or any window where I <laughs> could But how could you and... not? You'd have to, because unless you're outside, you're going to have your back to something. Well, there's a bookshelf right there. I, I would have my I would choose to have my back to the bookshelf. Yeah, but on Ghostbusters, that's what the ghost starts with. It's floating the books around in the libraries. It would probably just push them off under your head. Imagine a big George R. R. Martin book comes down from the top shelf. Dude, you're dead. Okay. But <laughs> anyway, my uncle's not going to have George R. R. Martin books. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Darn it. <laughs> but yeah, that's the kind of thing. Like for example. One of the things that they were talking about in a recent show was the clown epidemic oh, thing that's been going on. Yeah, and what sucks is it has become an epidemic. And back when John first said he was going to move, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. What are we going to talk about? No, no, it was before that. Before I found out John was going to move, I thought, what are we going to do for a Halloween episode for the Dune Steve? Uh-huh. And there was this article, and I still have it on my phone, and I was going to read it. Because it was from like a month ago, the very first time this right. shit stuff happened. <laughs> and yeah, I really, I wanted to share it with you because it was so creepy and it was anomalous and it had happened in some town in Iowa or something. Exactly. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the coolest, creepiest story. And I was going <laughs> to read it and we were going to do an I thought, well, we'll do an episode where we talk about like creepy things that happened in the news. And this would be the winner one. And it's from September 7th, 2016. There have been reports of clowns spotted lurking in the woods. In the past month, police in the Carolinas have received multiple reports from people claiming clowns with white painted faces were acting strangely in the area, (laughs) at least once attempting to lure kids into the woods 
with money. And I was just like, oh, my, this is the greatest thing ever. I mean, it was, I, I felt giddy about it. And then it happened again. 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 And that happened in your town. And that happened in my town. And that happened in every town across America. And it suddenly wasn't unique or fun or cool anymore. It's just like the first time you hear Donald Trump said, what? Holy crap. But then 20 <laughs> times later, you're, like, you're like, oh, oh you guys are Trump. still surprised by what Donald, Donald Trump, Trump said? Yeah, this. Yeah. I, I, sorry, How can guys. you still be surprised? That's a, that's not. So, yes, you've been the, listening the to clowns, skeptics. They, they mentioned it on there and then they were talking about how, I mean, A, th- this is not part of the skeptics thing, but just that. I mean, they talked about it on there, but this doesn't have anything to do with the whole deal. But anyways, yeah, the the, the costumes, like clown costumes at costume shops, because it's Halloween time. I mean, this stuff started right before Halloween when all of this stuff became readily available. If it had happened in May, this probably would have never happened because only so many people already own a clown costume. But, you know, you can join in the freaking mass hysteria by just running down to the costume shop, getting a creepy clown costume. You know, it was really funny because, uh, you know, I mean, this thing's become such a thing that at, on the news, you know, we had uh, we ran a story about, you know, a clown sighting in the area or whatever. There there have been some people actually took pictures of these people that were dressed as clown, like some guy just standing under a freeway overpass dressed as a clown and holding balloons just standing there. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but, I love that so much. <laughs> and so we're showing these pictures and tell, oh yes, and this clown menace is taking the nation or whatever. And then we cut to like the goofy morning reporter guy. You know, the guy that like goes out and is just doing the silly story at the local amusement park or whatever. So this guy's at... Are you making that noise? No, I think it's... I'm hearing it from the ceiling... Okay, but there's it, not an upper is, floor. Is it just like wind or maybe like a tree from outside? Uh, okay, so yeah, the, <laughs> the story is now totally ruined because of that stuff all in between. But anyways, so yeah, they, they're, they're showing the whole story about the clown hysteria. And then they immediately follow that with, and yeah, we're going to our uh, morning dork reporter who was out with the haunted circus... And it was just this place that, like, every year they set up, like, a little big top. And then there's creepy clowns. <laughs> and you go there. And it's, you know, it's a haunted house thing that they do every Halloween. <laughs> I swear, it's, like, right after the story. Then we got him there. And there's all these creepy clowns. And he's, like, interviewing me. I'm like, oh, you guys are scaring me. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was a really funny juxtaposition. Yeah, I said it juxtaposition well but th- if you are running a haunted carnival or creepy circus or whatever then you love all of this <laughs> stuff because it, it's it's free promotion for you yeah. essentially the same thing that yeah my sister said that clown costume sales before the, even the month of october had begun had were 300 yeah. percent above what they were even last year's whole halloween season yeah and this was you know when the very beginning of october and so, yeah, that it's like if you are a costume shop or whatever, you love this. Yeah, totally. That would be awesome. But the first time I heard it, I loved it too. And I got <laughs> to admit, I was tempted. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll go out and buy myself a, a clown costume. Because what can they do? That's the thing. Like, I, I, was, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, you know, uh, if there was ever a hoax that I would love to get in on, this would be it. Because you just get a clown outfit and you just stand around somewhere. Go somewhere odd and just stand around. And then what? The police come up and they're like, hey, what are you doing? Just, well, just standing here. And they're like, oh, move along. And you go, well, okay. And then you go. They, they can't like arrest you. They can't? I you... would think at this point they could. <laughs> because they might anyways, I guess, after, at this point. But they can't. There's nothing they can do. What did you do? It's Especially funny. considering that the costumes sold 300% more than before. Everybody's got a costume. So they can't just say, oh, you're the guy that everybody's seen that tried to lure kids into the with money. But see, that's what that was something that I was thinking is that you could get away with a great deal knowing that there are 25 other people out there roaming around dressed as a clown. And some, one of them will get the, the blame or, <laughs> you know, just the fact that this stuff is going on. 
it's a child molester's paradise. I yeah, think. I know, probably. Maybe I don't, I'm wrong. Yeah, the, just a funny thing, you know, working in news and seeing like the uh, the titles they give these stories just cracks me up. And it, when it's just like clown threat or like clown menace, and you're just like, what menace is? What is he gonna chase you down in his big floppy shoes? Like, I'm sure even a little kid could outrun a friggin' clown. Stop clowning. <laughs> I can write much better copy than <laughs> Clown Menace. Oh, it just cracks me up. Just like, don't come on. Send in the clowns. <laughs> they, and they were talking about this on, on, so back to the skeptics thing. They were saying that, like, apparently, like, the majority of these clown sightings aren't even clown sightings. It's just like friggin' mass hysteria kind of a thing where somebody says they saw a clown lurking near the woods or something. And now all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, yeah, I, I think. Did you see that? I think I saw it. Kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen those, like, fakey ba- Bigfoot. Like, somebody saw Bigfoot or something. They're just driving along. And then, out the what was that? Out the window. And, like, they had just some shot out the window. And some dude in a suit, I'm sure. They're like, I think that was Bigfoot. Oh, my gosh. You could do it. You, yeah, any of that. You could get away with any hoax once everybody's freak out level gets up there. Makes me think of like the um, M. I think the movie was just called M. Fritz Lang's M. Yeah, with the Peter Lorre in it. With Peter Lorre as the Kindermörder. Uh, Did they really call him that? Yeah, the Kindermörder. So I, I guess I saw it in German and subtitled. Did you not see that? I never saw it actually. Oh, okay. I'm just well, familiar with it because I'm a film guy. Mm-hmm. It basically, yeah, you get you get the hysteria that like somebody gets a kid. And then pretty soon, you know, they've got a curfew and nobody can go out or do anything. And like the whole town, uh, once they finally find out who the guy who's doing this is, they basically just become the judge and jury. They're so mad and they're going to. And and the crime guys, like all the, the mob is upset because because of the crackdown and, you know, nobody can be in the streets and all this kind of stuff. They can't conduct the business, the business. Uh, sure you watched it in German? And so they help the townspeople catch this guy. And they're, you know, being judge, jury, and executioner in, like, some building. Is, and this guy's trying to plead his case. Does that have anything to do with anything? I thought it did. But now I'm not sure. Well, the hysteria built up around but the yeah, clowns. But, yeah, the hysteria around the clowns. You can, you can do... I guess just, you know, as soon as it happens... Somebody I saw the clown in the woods. They didn't really. Or they, my friend said that he saw the clown in the woods. You know, probably all sorts of people are just making it up just because, hey, it's it's the cool thing. And if you say that, then everybody will think that's even neater. Well, yeah, because you become center of attention. You have a story that everybody is interested in to tell. I wonder all these clown sightings, how many clowns people are actually seeing yeah, how many there but, actually were but at the same time i oh gosh i was i was so tempted just to buy like helium balloons and leave them tied to you know cars and parking lots and, and stuff like that <laughs> so people are like oh my gosh a clown has been here so what you were saying a minute ago was <laughs> was i saying something a minute ago was no that people make themselves susceptible to, to believing things, to seeing things. Yeah, and a the, mass the, hysteria. Yeah, and the frenzy just kind of builds, and as as soon as you suggest that that thing's around, people are going to start seeing it. I think that that's entirely that's one hundred percent applicable to what we're doing right now. Because I went to the bathroom before, and in the back of my mind, it was like, what if when I went in the bathroom, I turn on the light, and somebody is looking at me. In the mirror, you know, somebody is there, like this dead guy, or, or you know, his, his dead mother, or some shit like that. And for a second, you know, the light goes on, and it's my reflection. But for a second, I was just like, <gasps> it was my reflection, like I said. But I, be, you know, if I could replay that second, <laughs> for a second, it wasn't. It was something else. My mind had jump started what i was going to see uh-huh. it had it, it, it had already decided that it, there was going to be something awful in the mirror and we're at a movie there would have been a screaming noise right like <laughs> and then it would have gone away yeah. the whole audience would have jumped for a second so, yeah and then laughed and and those those are yeah. great nervous titters scream those jump scares but i was reminded of, of being a kid 
And you know what it's like. You know, when oh, you're a yeah, kid, bad. you believe in Santa Claus, you believe in the Tooth Fairy, you believe in angels, you believe in all that bullshit. And one of the things that was a big deal when I was uh, in elementary school was that if you went into the boys' bathroom <laughs> and, and you Biggie looked Smalls. in the mirror... <laughs> We've had this conversation, haven't we? And you said Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls. But it, it was Bloody Mary. Uh-huh. But there were kids who had done it. And usually... It was, you know, older kids, second graders, third graders or whatever that were telling us about it. But there were kids that, and they swore and you believed them that they saw a, the woman yeah. appear in the mirror. Or they saw, a, a, you know, a shadow of a woman, you know, reaching for them on the bathroom wall or whatever. We would go in there, you know, usually. No, I would never have been brave enough to do it as, <laughs> as a kid by myself. But you'd go in 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 a group of two or three or whatever, and you'd say, Bloody Mary. And you're supposed to say it three times or five times or 112 times, which explains why I didn't learn to read until I was 15. And then one person would scream, whether they saw something or whether they just thought it would be funny to to scream or whether it jumped into their head, what if she's right behind you? And they go, ah! And then that person screams, and it's a and you scream, and everybody, everybody would screams go running and runs out. out into the hall, screaming and laughing, and it uh-huh. was fun. But you'd convince yourself that you saw something, or that you know your buddy Anthony saw something, or I think I saw a shadow, or and and all that. And I think this is part of that, and especially here in this house where we know that there's a bad history, we know that people have experienced things that are unexplainable or maybe are explainable by the skeptics yeah. podcast. Well, see, that's the thing about skeptic skepticism doesn't say that they can explain things necessarily. They just don't believe in stuff without evidence. You know what I mean? You don't just, Oh yeah. Well, some guy said that they saw something and it's like, okay, well let's see it again. What well, you had used some term, some terminology, you know, like false di- dichotomy or something. Like, what was it? <laughs> confirmation bias? Confir- tell me what confirmation bias is. And, and folks, if you're listening at home and you know what confirmation bias is, now is your time to go to the bathroom and maybe something will be waiting for you in there. <laughs> or now is your time to yell at the player as you realize that I really don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, people love <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Confirmation bias. I don't. I don't know if this applies, but it, I think it might. Basically, confirmation bias is you have an a belief in your head, right? Uh, you think things are a certain way. Like, say for example, you're an anti-vaxer. You know, you don't listen to the Incredible Hulk when he tells you how important herd immunity is. You just continue to believe that it must cause autism. And so all of this evidence comes out saying, no, 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 it doesn't cause autism. There, the guy who said originally that it caused autism was actually totally making this crap up. He was just trying to come up with some kind of finding to give himself a name. And, it, you know, all of these truths come out about this. that This is not true. But then there's some poorly done scientific study that says, well, maybe. And that's the one thing you grab onto because that is what you think is real. And so you, you go with that. Despite all the other evidence, you just you, you, your confirmation bias will only let you, you pick and choose the stuff that matters. So in, in, I don't know if this really counts for something like this. But in a case like this where you come in and, I don't know, you're Mulder and you want to believe. So you're here and you want there to be ghosts and you talk like we are doing right now. Basically trying to creep ourselves out as we're in a creepy place. We're talking about ghosts. We're, we're uh, you know, every time we hear the slightest creak, we're like, oh, who's that? Did you hear that? Huh? Oh. And so, yeah, anytime you hear something like that, yeah, that's going to feed into you. Oh, yeah, no, that there's, there's proof. But part of me wants us to have some kind of experience <laughs> that something tangible like, you know, one of a sees a ghost or, or I, I don't know, something that's unexplainable. A long faced one with a big, uh, big mouth. Jeez. I no, that, I'm going to draw the line. I, I, <laughs> sexy ghost. Oh, okay. Quiet, with that. subtle ghost. Like the one I from probably... Ghostbuster that floats over your uh, bed and unzips your pants. <laughs> yes. Those sorts of things. <laughs> I like that ghost. Are acceptable. But the, yeah, the ones with like the jaw that unhinges or whatever. 
I, the ones I, that look like the scream mask. Yeah, those I am. I'm afraid I I, I are not welcome tonight. <laughs> but no. But in the back of my mind, I thought, well, oh, wouldn't it be great? Is if something happened while we were recording, and people would be like, "Holy crap, guys, you are onto something." I don't know. I. I'm, I'm building myself up so excitedly that if nothing happens, I'm going to feel like we're a failure. And I'm, uh, I apologize if really people have been down. listening for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, 15 to 20. Have we been going longer than that? Ah. Oh. Well, I apologize if people have been listening this long and it hasn't been worth your while. I See, I keep thinking I hear something, but there's nothing. Wait, wait. I did hear something. Listen. Oh, you piece of crap. <laughs> okay, well, folks, please ignore that part. Big is not taking this seriously enough. And Oh, oh gosh. Oh, okay. Well, there's no way not to take that seriously. That's right. Oh, that's awful, dude. Fear me. You had some kind of sausage. Fear. Yeah, it was sausage. That oh, was fine. my stuff. What was, today. The, what it was the thing that you ate? It's called a piadina. Really? I don't know if that's a real thing, though. Like, the restaurant calls itself Italian street food. Do people... I mean, they, they put the stuff inside of, like, basically a burrito shell. Is that a thing that Italians do? I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. But uh, what I do know is when I was in junior high, I saw Trudy Wood's Piadina once. Really? Okay. Yeah. It was an accident, but I was Sound. happy about it. <gasps> Wait. I think okay. That time I think I really heard something. I don't believe you now. I th- it's like fool me what? once, you are not to fart again. Here, take this. Use this as a butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> My Zoom stopped working while we were recording, and I've found a new purpose for it. <laughs> Except for that, you're gonna have to use it again later and put that butt plug right underneath your nose. Imagine what it'll smell like then. Well, I don't have to imagine, sir. <laughs> this room. Uh, okay, but I, I, we were talking about something before you farted. Dang it. You ruined... ruined. It, wasn't, it wasn't clowns anymore, right? It was something no, past that? I think that? we've gotten past the clown thing. Uh, well, we, you and were it talking wasn't about cognitive dissonance? Confirmation I mean, confirmation bias. bias? Oh, I, at one point I said, uh, you know, if, if people are listening and, and, and they're disappointed, you know, I, I, I feel bad. I want there to be something on this thing. I want it to be remark. I want people to, to listen through to the end and be like, holy crap, I got to give this to my friend who's never listened to the Dune Steve because those guys are lame. Sorry. I, I nearly said the G word, <laughs> which is like three times as bad as lame. And I, I want people to be like, holy cow, listen, listen to this. That You know, like at one point they started interviewing a ghost. <laughs> the doorbell rang and it's like oh here is somebody yeah, that wants the- to use the telephone he's like what are you doing is this a podcast <laughs> like well, y- yes yes uh, what is with those strange period clothes you're wearing <laughs> is that a tuxedo you're wearing and a cape and the, that's yes. odd I and left my, my top, top hat, hat in the, the carriage. carriage and we're like wow uh Okay, this is just stupid, guys. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it. I, it I, I don't mean for it to be. Okay, but yeah, unfortunately. Tell me more about your podcast. <laughs> the blue, the blue. <laughs> is it available on Podcast Pickle? Uh, I don't think anything is anymore, sir. <laughs> He's that outdated. He's the yes. <laughs> He's so From outdated. The Victorian the era. The Victorian era clothes were one thing, but ugh. Oh. Like, I have heard about, about this new thing, thing podio books. Dot com. No, no, that's not a new thing. That's not a thing at all, sir. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we've got these great big heavy microphones, so we're sort of stuck here in the middle of the room. Stuck in the middle with you. Okay. <laughs> Optimally, we would ex- like explore every room of the house while we're recording and, be, and go down to the basement and all that stuff. Gosh, I, why didn't we think this through? Well, we wanted the good sound. That's true. That's true. Often. Because, you know, the weird, the weird noises and stuff like that, we wanted to make sure that we would hear them. <laughs> Sadly, I don't even know if we actually do or not. I mean, I've got the headphones in, but they're just basically to make sure that the... You know, in case uh, some static starts coming through, I might want to know that that's happening. Yeah, now I wonder how bad the sound was on the first half of our episode but well, we're sure as hell not re-recording it it wasn't that bad it was it started late and 
only happened here and there. So it wasn't bad. We nipped it in the bud. What if it was some kind of otherworldly presence that interfered oh, with the electrical What do they call those things? OVP or something like that? Electronic voice EVP. phenomenon? Not yeah, EVP. EVP. Oh, where you like turn up the sound. Yeah. It's static. Oh, it's, you turn it up and it's like, I'm coming for your son. Hey, that's, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> Somebody ought to write a story about that or two. But yeah, I... Dude, I, for a second there, I was super, super excited <laughs> because you've heard those, right? I mean, I, I, it's on the internet, everything is on the internet. But you've heard those where it's it's static, and maybe it's saying something. Maybe it's just your mind looking for sim not symbols, uh, significance in the in randomness. What do you call that? Patterns. Patterns. Yeah. And the mind is. That's is, what we are as pattern making creatures. It's it. Our our brains are hardwired. To listen for language, to listen to to make sense of noises and and all that. I've heard that before. Yeah, that it, you, that people hear what they want to hear because you, our brain, especially for the voices of other human beings, we hear that on a different level. The same way that like a, a mother hears her child crying in the night, uh-huh. whereas nobody else, because they don't have that biological or psychological connection with that kid, hears it and she's like, "That's my kid." And it's like that was three blocks away. She mm-hmm. heard that. You know? It's true, though. I mean, as far as that thing goes, like we'll say, I take my kid to the park, and there's 15 other kids playing or something like that. I'm distracted with something else, and then I hear some kid start crying, start screaming, and I don't have to turn around. You know that it's another. Yeah, kid. I know immediately whether it's my kid or not my kid. Just by the sound. I hear the sound. I was like, oh, that's somebody else's kid. Yeah, he can die. He can die? <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, I, I don't smoke. really that wish not... death on what, 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 Did you hear that? I, I, that sounded like footsteps. I, I... Or something. Almost sounded like something was pushed over. Okay, do you guys hear? Okay, just, just silence. Let's... Okay. <laughs> like the hairs on my arms is like <laughs> sticking up. It's like... Okay, holy crap. That was that was close, dude. That was something did, falling down. Did it sound like it was... Uh, what, was that down in the basement, you think? Maybe it was the hall. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> this is stupid, but I don't want to go in there by myself. <laughs> Can, well, I don't want to go in there at all. Oh, um, okay. Well, maybe we shouldn't. But I, uh, it, okay. Did you hear it through the... The headphones? It I wasn't think, my imagination. I, th- I think so, but it's always hard to tell whether I've heard it through headphones or just because I heard it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, I, I'm just going to walk into the hall. Okay, you want me to... Okay, hold on. I'll come with you. Let me... Uh, uh. <laughs> it's empty. Yeah, I don't see anything. Do you think that... I don't see anything Was in the this hall. door closed? Could the door have, like, swung? You're it's gonna... a heavy door, right? <laughs> Nothing is on the stairs. I, you, you, the microphones can still hear us? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, well, I... <sighs> Shoot again, guys! I, 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 nothing was there. Have you ever watched those like ghost hunters shows on? And it's always that kind of crap. Of, ooh, oh, did you hear it? No, nothing. There was nothing. <laughs> and I, well, the needle on my spectrometer is, uh, yeah, yeah, it's doing what it always does. You did that once, didn't you? Didn't you like go ghost hunting? Like you went I, to, and all they told you was like, yeah, sometimes when orbs appear on your camera, that means it was a ghost. Yeah, the very beginning of that ghost hunting expedition, they showed photographs of, you know, actual encounters, ghosts, actual evidence of the supernatural. You know, if everybody take a bunch of pictures. And if any of you have success, then give, send us the pictures and we'll use them in next year's ghost tour. And yeah, I got to admit... A couple of the pictures they showed at the beginning were just like, oh my, there is so totally a face 
in that picture. You know what I mean? It's like this is a picture that somebody took in the hall or whatever. And there's just blackness. But beyond the blackness, there's somebody standing there. You know what I mean? That kind of thing where you're just like, well, but maybe that's just another ghost hunter or whatever. I mean, we don't know the context of right. this picture. What if that was his friend standing there? And it's just like, oh. But again, Mulder. It's like, I, you I want to believe. to believe that it's a ghost <laughs> kind of thing. And yeah, we all looked at our pictures afterward. And yeah, there were these round circles in many, many of the pictures. And, and I think at the time I said, well, this is there's probably moisture in the air because it's October and it's night. And the flash mm, bulb flash. goes off. Yeah, the flash and, illuminates any dust that's flying around. Something like that. I'm sure that's what it is. I'm a skeptic. I, I listen to Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, so I, I totally understand this thing. I'm, I'm awesome. <sighs> okay, well, I... I'm, yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little weirded out, to tell you the truth. Uh, so I'm having a hard time coming up with something to say. Okay, well, no, that, that's, that's good. Mr. Skeptic. <laughs> because if, like no, I said, I'm, I was I'm afraid to go in the hall by myself. And I, I know I'm a grown man and all that stuff. But you're a grown I have, ass man. I'm a grown ass. Yeah, that's, that's great. Stop saying you're a grown ass man. Stop saying that. I, <laughs> I have an overactive imagination. I've told you before. There are times when I freaked myself out. Oh, my gosh. I, I got to tell you, dude, this. This is not even a month old thing. I was asleep, as you do at night, and I had a nightmare or, I, you know, one of those things where there was a bad dream or whatever, and I opened my eyes, and it was a dark room. There's a little bit of light coming through the window from the street light outside, but, you know, and, and the light from the alarm clock or whatever. But there was enough, oh, geez, there was enough light in the room to see that there was a man standing right there beside my bed like his head was at on level with my head so he had to have been kneeling and it was clear enough that okay it's been three weeks since this happened but i still remember that he had long stringy gray hair and a long gr dirty gray beard and it's one of those things where your body just went <gasps> at the fact that there was somebody standing right there now again you are the one that listens to the Skeptic Podcast. <laughs> but I knew there wasn't really a guy there. I saw him. My sense is I saw this guy there. And what's weird is I can still see him in my mind's eye. It was that vivid. But I knew he wasn't really there. I knew that I was coming out of my dream. Some synapses were still firing wrong or whatever happens. Uh -huh. I don't know. We'll ask Brian Lincoln or the Hulk to tell <laughs> yeah, us how would. these things work. And so the I credible Hulk. And so I closed my <laughs> eyes and at the same time I'm just going <sighs> And it's just like okay I'm, I'm closing my eyes and when I open my eyes he's not going to be there anymore because he's not there. He's there's nobody actually there. And I opened my eyes and yeah my 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 nightstand was there where this guy was. And there's a lamp there that maybe is vaguely human shaped because it's got the big top and and all and the stand and the that comes down. And I, I, I knew that I was that I had dreamt it that there was you know there wasn't I I knew that it wasn't real, but at the same time the little part in the back of my mind was just like, oh hell. No, you you just saw uh -huh. a guy in your room. Uh -huh. And so ultimately, I turned on my light. I turned on the lamp. I turned on the head of the homeless guy standing <laughs> next to me. And I just turned the light on. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go back to sleep now. And I just left the light on until <laughs> morning. It was the best I could do, the most grown-up way I could do it. I did go back to sleep. Whereas if this had happened to me like in L.A., because I, I used to tell you about the vivid idea I had of a woman crawling right, across the floor across. toward my bed and how freaked out I would be by that where I couldn't go back to sleep I was like oh my gosh what if she grabs me the second I go to sleep so I have matured a little bit <laughs> but at the same time I know I have this overactive imagination and it's effed me over before like it effed me over just now in 2016 with a stringy faced old man 
staring at me, stringy face. I was going to say, I think he was stringy haired, not stringy faced, but you know, I'll I'll let you talk on without interrupting because. But I, you know, this is part of, of, I don't know that that's confirmation bias, but it is part of psyching yourself up so much that you see what you want to see or that your mind goes, okay, well, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll prove you right. I don't, you know, <laughs> the same way that people see the clowns when there aren't clowns or, I don't know. I, I think it, it, it's safe to say we actually heard something in this house. Right, in the hall or the basement. Yeah, we did hear or something like that. An actual noise. But I could see somebody imagining that they hear something or oh I, I, and okay, that when we went on that ghost hunt. And I know I I told this when we did it, because I that was part of the reason for going on the ghost hunt was so that I could talk about it later on a my podcast on a marathon. But at one point we were in this room, and it was the old schoolhouse. Where the, I guess, kids were taught, or maybe back in those days, children taught the grown-ups. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it was a very different time. Yeah, it was. Well, you started, <laughs> back in those days, you started as an old person, and then you got younger. It wasn't until the age of television when things flipped. You the aged other. in reverse like Benjamin Button. Yes, that's right. That's what it used to happen. It, it was the Benjamin Button Academy of Science uh, that I was in. I was in the middle of this place, and the guy, the, the tour guide, and he could have been a little better, but he could have been a heck of a lot worse, because he didn't come out and say, I believe in ghosts, but he also didn't ruin the fun and say, Abs- guys, there are no ghosts. He, he sort of just let you be the judge. And he said, you know, this is the room, this place, this the old school room, and there's a name for that, whatever the room where they would all learn together. Schoolhouse? Rock? Uh, <laughs> Why? Why do you do the conjunction junction thing in my head? First, it was Game of Thrones theme, and now it's conjunction <laughs> junction. This this was the this is the place he said where people have seen the most stuff was in this this room, and so I said to my friend, this was at the end of the night, and we had gone on the whole tour and not seen anything, and I just I really wanted there to be something for us to talk about, you and me, when we got together. And so I said, okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, you're going to leave and I'm going to stay in this room in the dark and I'm going to listen and, and just like put out your feelers kind of thing, your psychic feelers and see if I feel anything. And so it was just so, so dark. I mean, it's a, it's a building from the 1800s. You know, not it doesn't have exit signs that are illuminated or anything like that. Although it did have motion detectors, which <laughs> I thought were funny. You know, those little things in the top, in the corner of the, of the ceiling, that have a light that goes on if there's movement, right? So, but I had gone into the, the center of this room and stood completely still in the dark, and those things stopped flashing, stopped lighting up, and, and so I was just okay. Here it goes. If something's going to happen. It's going to happen now. And a big part of me was just like, please, something happen. How something happen? And nothing happened. I mean, I wish I could say that the motion detector started flickering. Something was moving in the room, you know, kind of thing. Or that a breeze blew through. Or a cold spot or something. Or, I mean, worst of all, like you feel something breathing on the back of your neck. You know that something. And that's the thing. I mean, you don't sleep alone. But there is a feeling, even if you don't hear them, when you know somebody's in the room with you. Do you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's kind of like Like you wake up in the middle of the night, you know whether your wife has gone to work or not, just from the thickness of the air or something. Yeah, it's it's like a sense that that, uh, people... I think it's actually a real thing where... I mean, it's like a sixth sense where it just... When someone is looking at you, like you can t- feel that, or so you know what I'm saying, like somebody's actually watching you. I don't know if there's, there's it's because that means there's danger or something, but it's some kind of a thing that I think people have actually developed, like evolutionarily. 
Although I could be just, you know, now that I'm supposed to be a skeptic, I probably ought to say that might be bull crap. I ought to that look that up. That might be pseudoscience. Yeah, but I've heard that that's a, that's a real thing. Like one of the many, you know, because people say, oh, yes, we have five senses. It's not really true. There's actually a lot of senses that people have. Just we don't really think about like the fact that we can find any place on our body a, as a sense. You don't have to have your eyes open to find your elbows. You know, you can find them with your eyes closed or gouged out or anything, you know, those kind of things. I think, I don't know what all these senses are, but I've actually seen a list or heard somebody talk about them or something. But yeah, I think that that may actually be one of them, the being able to feel. What is that? Do you hear that? Yeah. It sounds like maybe wind. Oh, that's not wind, dude. Okay, silence, silence. Jesus, that is something. Can you hear it through the microphone? I can't tell. I don't know. That sounds like a kid or something. You think so? What? Like a little five-year-old? <sighs> Okay, so that's now I feel stupid, but but okay, but Brian Lincoln, if you're listening, because we were talking about kids, ghost kids, and stuff like that, am I interpreting the sound that I hear as a kid? Or okay, I'm gonna be quiet again. Okay, now I don't hear it. You you heard it though. What did it sound like to you? Like uh, like what? I don't know, like maybe crying or something in the, in the distance. You remember that time when we recorded the That Gets My Goat in the parking lot and we could hear like some child wailing off in the... It almost sounds like that. Yeah, but that was just really irresponsible parenting. <laughs> remember, it was well, like maybe... 1.45 in the morning and we're talking about <laughs> Finding Nemo and some woman who is like, well, I need my meth. You go back to sleep. Yeah, I mean, that may be what it is again, for all you know. It could be like the next door neighbors has got their window open and they're. It's definitely something. I can hear something. Okay, but, but here's, here's the clincher. Where does it sound like it's coming from? Holy shit, dude. Okay, that was real. Uh, did, did you you heard that, right? Through the microphone? I, through the microphone? Well, you mean in the headphones? Through, through the headphones. I think... I think I did. Yeah, I heard... Uh, okay, that sounded like something on the stairs. Something rolling down the... Something... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, what? Okay, at this point, I think we need... Oh gosh, I can't go believe look? I'm saying this, but we gotta we gotta go look. So you think we should split up, Scooby? Oh no no, <laughs> heck no! Please don't split. Hold my hand if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go and check this out. Holy crap! You heard that, right? Yes. Something moving, was, this falling. That was loud. Okay, I think we should split up. Okay, okay. Let's Okay. <laughs> it's funny that adrenaline. I, I I I feel like 
like we ran or did something. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're breathing heavy. A little bit. You breathe heavy just, I mean, going up any stairs. So coming back up those shouldn't surprise you that you're breathing heavy at this point. You're older than the hills. Yeah, I don't, I, I heard a noise. I swear I heard a noise, but what the heck that was. There was nothing. I didn't see anything. Did you did you spook yourself into seeing something? Oh, I used that word. Did you? <laughs> we'll have to put did a, you? What do we? What do you call it? We'll have to put a, an explicit warning. An explicit. On this well, I think we do that with everything, so we should be covered. Uh, did you mass hysteria see a clown down there or something like? Did you see anything that you thought you saw? Because I, I, for a second there, I, I, yeah, I didn't see anything, but I felt like. We were going to see something. I, and I know that sounds so stupid. <laughs> but it's in the same way that I was saying, you know whether you're in bed alone or not. I felt like You know somebody that you had, are in bed alone. We'll just put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dollars to donuts, kids. I know. <laughs> but I felt like there was somebody downstairs. And that we were going to get down there. And it would be my Uncle John saying, oh, you know, I had to get handkerchiefs or something like that you know <laughs> I, I i don't know some bullcrap reason to come back into the house and just happens to be while we're recording uh-huh he's and just so messing with us that's why he was all reticent we had nothing to do he's just like already planning his practical job oh, now oh, that would have been awesome that would, oh which reminds me charlene has not called she was supposed to call like an hour ago and that's too bad well hopefully she'll still we'll we'll still hear from her but no, we, so we went down there, and it was dark, of course. Basements are dark, and I'm glad that we didn't have flashlights that we could just flip on the light. Yeah, and that's another thing. If, if like they had turned off the power at this house, it would be a, a totally different experience of you know having to go down there and everywhere that we flat, shine the flashlight, who knows what might be standing in there. Clowns. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. The clowns are a little played out this year. Next year. <laughs> There's zombies. A, zombies aren't played out, no, right? They're, no, they're zombies. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I we turned on the light. And we went in every room, right? And nothing, nothing was there. And we, we finally turned on the light. And I, I don't, I didn't tell you. Do you know which room down there it happened in? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, what well, was the the third room? The one where the one that we spent the least amount of time in. And I don't know if that is because subconsciously it's like okay let's move on okay let's move just a little faster but we were just in there for a second and looked around it's an empty room nobody ever stayed in there i think my uncle was smart enough to just say we're going to store boxes in here Uh anyway i thought when you turn on the light that maybe maybe he would be standing (laughs) i know i know but it's now, a, there's a heightened sense, or, and, and so, that's what it is. You said it was sixth sense, right? Uh, something that has, through evolution, kept us alive. A heightened sense of alertness when there might be danger. When the, right? Yeah. Well, w- wanting to believe on top of that is a thing that we have evolved. I mean, like, say you're just some hominid. Uh, living in the savannah in Africa and you hear a uh, rustling noise in the grass. You know, there's two choices, basically. You know, it's, oh, it's probably just the wind, which, you know, 90% of the time, at least, it probably was. But 10% of the time, it may have been a leopard. A uh, smilodon. Uh, okay, a, a saber A saber-toothed <laughs> tiger, yeah, it's just creeping up on you. And the evolutionary cost of being wrong and thinking it's danger when it really isn't, there isn't an evolutionary cost to that. You know, you you thought, oh, it's danger. I better run. Turns out it was just the wind. What did that cost you? Well, you ran a little extra. But... The evolutionary cost to saying, ah, it's probably just the wind, and it turned out to be a smilodon. Well, then now you're a meal instead, and your genes don't get passed on. Yeah. So So the ones that had this ability of going, did you hear that? Was that something? I think I'm going to flood my body with adrenaline right now in case I need to run. Those were the ones that those got Those are the ones that, yeah, exactly. So that's probably the reason why. Now, here's the question. I feel you, like I'm in the room with Brian Lincoln. Right <laughs> you say you want to see something. You went on your ghost hunt and you hid out in that room 
and you wanted something to happen. You wanted to see the motion detectors flick or whatever, anything. You wanted to feel a cold spot or you wanted to see a ghost child say, Hey, uh, have you seen my slate? I don't know where I left my slate. The teacher's going to spank me. He's going to cane me. What? There's some kind of little limey ghost. Hey, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> Come here. Listen to this. It's, it's charming. Okay, hey, ghost. Say uh, that you would like some more. Please, sir. Can I have some more? More? You want more? <laughs> it's from Oliver Twit. Okay. He gets it. The ghost gets it. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, I don't know. You, you, you see some ghost. Then what? You know, seeing the ghost in the movies... Sorry, I saw movement in the window. It's just a moth, but... Oh, moths. Moth, man. Could have been the moths from your story. You'd have to cut off your own genitals. So if you see this ghost, then what? I mean, isn't that going to be a bad thing? Like, don't people, when they see ghosts, go crazy? Or, I would. I certainly would. Or the ghost kills them or... Something like that, and yet you're just saying, please, ghost, come to me and do your worst. Does that not ever come across your... <laughs> I, it, it does, and, but it, and it, it's a dichotomy, dude. Mm -hmm. I want to see something, but at the same time, I don't want to see. And maybe my subconscious is like, okay, <laughs> even if there's something there, I'm going to convince you you didn't, because I want you to continue existing. Cannot I want to be insane. But at the same time, it's just like, oh, gosh, I want to see something I want. And it's the same as these people that and, and it used to happen a lot more back in, you know, Charles Dickens days where they, they want evidence of life after death. They want to know that there's an afterlife. They want to know that there's there's something else so desperately that they're willing to pay money to these people mediums and these people that can see beyond the veil. And when you were talking about confirmation bias, I was reminded of that, of where people would pretend to be psychic or pretend that, you know, they have a vision and, and they say, oh, uh, you know, I see a man, he's a tall man, he's, he's a, a very fat man with, with a beard and, and, and you're, you, you're the one that you lost is none of those things. And he's like, uh, he, and he wears spectacles and they're, they're round rim spectacles. And suddenly you're like, oh, my grandfather wore round rim spectacles and you forget that he was tall and that fat. That he was short and, and yeah, and, that, and and he was thin and that, you know, he wasn't a man at all. You know, you forget <laughs> these things. You only focus on the one it's thing. It's actually a chihuahua. And this is, that's how those mediums right. worked and how they continue bias, to work. Where you remember the successes and totally ignore and forget how many things he tossed at you first. Yeah, that's how these mediums are able to read the room and do that kind of stuff. Michael Shermer. I have a book by that guy called Why People Believe Crazy Things, Unusual Things. I can't remember what it's called now. Should I know who Michael Shermer is? He's a skeptic. <laughs> but I listened to his book. I, I, I think I meant to give it to you one time. I think I still have the audiobook of it. I should loan it to you. Why People Believe Crazy, silly, uh, stupid. I can't remember exactly what the title is. I, I believe it was called Why People Believe Bullshit. <laughs> it might be that. By California <laughs> Reach Out <laughs> And F you very much. Um, well, I, again, I apologize for the people to whom this is a rerun. But my uncle is a great believer in ghosts, in the supernatural. And I know I've shared with you some of the stories that he's told and he loves to tell the stories. And because I love horror, I love Halloween. I, ever since I was a kid, I'd love to hear him tell these stories. And, you know, it, it's all the stronger because it's like these actually happened to me. He would say he tells them in the first person. It's right. not just, oh, I had a neighbor and he had these experiences. Right. Which so is how you usually hear those kind of stories. And it's not as strong when I tell them to you as it would be if he were here to tell it or, you know, his wife, dang it, were here to tell us what happened but you know i've asked my mom before you know her, who is his big sister how can all of this stuff happen to him how can these how can it all be real ma do you believe that he's seen all these things that that he's seen anyway this was a really really recent conversation that i had with her because she strikes me as really pragmatic and as somebody she's always been listening to michael Shermer. 
no, I'm not listening to Michael perfect. Shermer, but she's always been a, you know, uh, you know, it's just like, mom, how do you explain the dinosaurs or whatever? It's like, well, you know, I think and all that. And she had an answer. And so I was just like, oh, my mom knows these things. My mom's not going to, you know, fly off half cocked. She, she's she's going to read the book. She was one of those where it's like, well, you know, I, I, I'm i going to read this before I say that it's bad for everybody. I Not just my aunt said Harry Potter is of the devil. I'm going to read Harry Potter and then I'll know for sure whether it's of the devil or not. And and then I will call him Lord by the time I am done. <laughs> See, that's the, that's the way they, you know, kept in believing those kind of things. This is just basically the, the fear kind of a thing. Like, no, if you read Harry Potter... You will be a devil worshiper. Well, there. Uh, well, what? My father was no devil worshiper, and I'll have words with any man who says otherwise. <laughs> yes, you will be a devil worshiper <laughs> by the time you are done. No, sorry, go on. Your mom. Okay, pragmatic. So, so my uncle had back surgery in. S- I swear I heard that sound again, but now I don't hear. Uh, he had back surgery in September. Um, We're recording this, obviously, in October for Halloween. And he had to spend the night at the hospital. And again, they give you painkillers. They give you some kind of medication (laughs) or whatever. So I'm giving science the benefit of the doubt on this one. I'm giving Brian Lincoln a point just before has even started. Just giving him a courtesy point for his side. But he said he woke up in the middle of the night and he heard a woman crying in the room behind him you know so he 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 was in in a hospital room and he could hear a woman crying and it upset him he was trying to go to sleep but he's just like oh geez he said the crying went on and on and it was just like miserable like the crying of suffering not the crying of grief or whatever and finally he's just like i cannot oh fudge i can't take this anymore and he pushed his call button his his um Summoning the nurse button. There's there's a, a word for it, but let's I just. I think say, they're called a call button. Okay, well then that's good. But the, you call an elevator with the call button. Is it the same kind of thing? I think so. Anyway, we'll call it the nurse button. He said it took a long, long time for the nurse to come in, and he assumed, well, maybe she's dealing with this woman because the woman stopped crying, and eventually the nurse came in and and. She said, "What? Well, oh, are you all right? What, what what can I do for you?" And he said, "I'm, I'm fine. I mean, I'm a little sore, a little bit uncomfortable in the bed, but you've got to check in on this woman in the room next to me because she's been crying. It feels like for hours." And the woman says, "What what woman are you talking about?" And he's like, "Well, she stopped crying now, but she's just right there on the other side of the wall, and I can hear her." Well, I could hear her, and now I don't hear her. So maybe you've fixed it. What was wrong with her? What's she in for? And the nurse said, "There's no, there's nobody, there's no room on the other side of the wall. Yours is the last room on the wing. There's, there's just outside, beyond this wall." And he's like, "But I, no, I. Well, maybe I heard it like through the vents or, or something like that." And she's like. <sighs> No, there, there's probably nothing. Just just put it out of your mind. If you want something for the pain, we'll give it to you. Anyway, he's. I guess he's getting discharged later on the next day or, or whenever it happened. And it's a different nurse. And he tells the nurse this story. And the nurse said, you're not the only person to tell this story. That, to, to say that they heard somebody. And she says, I saw a woman in the hospital. It was like when I was first hired. I've been here for six years or something like that. But when I was first hired, it was the middle of the night. And I was at the desk. And I I thought I saw somebody walk past. And I looked up and there was nobody there. And I looked at the end of the hall. And I saw a woman walk into the room at the very end of the hall. And it was the middle of the night. There was not supposed to be any visitors so I stood up and I went to tell this lady, hey, I apologize, you're going to have to come back in the morning. And I went and I opened that room and there was a man in the hospital bed, you know, obviously, but there was no woman, there was nobody there. And he died that same night. Anyway, I was just like, oh my, really? 
And he's like, I swear, I swear this is true. Holy crap. It just happened two weeks ago or whatever, you know. And oh, it was sick. He got, he had this, they shaved down his plate. Cack? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but that was just for fun. They didn't even charge him for that. No, the what do you call the di- is it discs on your spine? Oh, okay, right. They shaved some because he was having nerve. They were pinching nerves uh-huh. or something like that, and apparently it was just excruciating. And so they shaved that thing. But then he kept lifting up the band his shirt and taking off the bandages so he could see what they had done. And I don't know why you, anybody would want to see that, but anyhow, I talked to my mom and i was like when you were at the hospital because she had gone Uh to be with him because apparently he became a little kid again and he's just like oh bring me this and i need ice cream and oh can you fluff my pillow Uh, i put on (laughs) scooby-doo apparently it was like that she was his big sister and she had taken care of him and and he reverted to childhood and became like helpless and it's like oh yeah all that stuff and so she was i can do it myself she was fine to to wait on him hand me? and foot. But I said, when you were there, did, were you there when the nurse told this creepy story? And she was like, no. I, I, I mean, I heard him tell about the woman crying in the in the room next to him. And yes, there weren't possibly any rooms behind him. But he was on painkillers. <laughs> and that's what I think it was. Uh-huh. And I was just like, but he always tells these stories, Ma. You, really, you don't believe any of them? And she said, well, he tells about the house, that there being things at the house. And I know I've told you about things that that he went into the garage and something moved past him in the garage, brushed past like a human being brushing past you. And then the garage door slammed shut. But there was nobody there. And he's told that story a couple of times and he tells it vividly. (laughs) And it's scary every single time because of conviction. He. I'm psyching myself out. I swear I heard a door that time. Dude, did you hear anything? Yeah, that's what I thought I heard. You did? I thought I heard it. (laughs) F you, man. (laughs) Not cool, not cool. (laughs) Anyway, she said, okay, so so I was over there, uh, and he's told all these stories about the house, and she, she stayed there, I think, three nights, because once he came home from the hospital, he was just, like, laid out on the couch and... There's only so much storage wars you can watch before you start to go insane. <laughs> well, then you can move on to uh, the pawn, that one pawnbroker show. Pawn Stars? Yeah, Pawn Stars. You know, I, I had heard that sh- of that show, or it's actually seen that show episode after episode before I ever got the title. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's clever. Anyway, she spent the night there trying to help him for, I, th- I think, three nights or two nights or something like that. And she said... Um, he asked her to to go get him something and she passed the bathroom and as she was walking past the bathroom this was to go to the kitchen she when she told it there was exactly what he wanted it was something super specific like you know he wanted some tropicana orange juice or whatever and it had to be the from concentrate or something like that <laughs> not from concentrate not from concentrate it had to be freshly squeezed with no pulp <laughs> and in a curly straw <laughs> extra pulp It had to be room temperature. (laughs) Anyway, she crossed the bathroom, and as she was walking past, something fell over in the bathroom. And she went to the the, the fridge and got him whatever it was, and and came and and she gave it to him, and then went to investigate the bathroom. And and she said there was nothing in there, but (laughs) as she was walking back to ask him about the bathroom, the plunger... The big plunger with the stick fell over toward her, right there as though somebody had pushed it toward her. She was standing in the doorway of the bathroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? Ma, this? And she says, so I think he probably is telling the truth. I saw this just three days ago or whatever. I think things happen in that house. And so I said to him, why would you live here? And he's just like, it doesn't matter where I go. I have these experiences. I had them when I was a kid. And my mom thinks that he has some, again, some other sense where he is able to sense things that we aren't, or they are able to sense him in a way that they don't sense the rest of us and all that. Well, although that doesn't explain why my mom yeah, would say mom would have toilet the plunger follow. I don't know. I don't know if I believe in that stuff or not. 
But if there were ghosts and they were here with us, you know what I mean? Just like, just on a slightly different plane, well, it kind of makes sense that maybe they would notice us every once in a while or, you know, in the same way that we would notice them every once in a while. And, and there are people that shine <laughs> a little brighter, that, that, that draw their attention and all that stuff. I, gosh, I don't know. Again, I'm furious that neither of them have, have called to participate in this, this episode. It would have been so good. Now, to- here's, here's a quick question. Uh, that's, I, when I was growing up, uh, I had this best friend in like fourth, fifth, sixth grade, that kind of time. In a time, time of your life when you have really no actual experience in life. And if somebody tells you something, you're probably going to just accept it as reality. They, why would they lie to you? But this friend of mine turns out lied to me all the time. He loved to just make up some story. And because I was a kid, I didn't, I just, oh, yeah, really? Oh, wow, yeah, tell me more. Oh, okay, yeah. And I, you know, ate it all up. Whatever stupid BS that he came up with, I just ate it up. And then, years later, I remember various things now and then that he had said. And I go, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense at all. Why? Oh, he was just making up crap and telling me stories because, I don't know, I guess it got him attention. It's like the clown people that we talk about. You know, you're the center of attention. Uh, there, are, I, there are people out there that would just, that just do crap like that. That just like to mess with people, like to, you know, suddenly change the feel of a room by telling a story about a ghost. You think there's any possibility that that's maybe what your uncle's like? Or does your mom confirming this make you think, nah, he's, he's probably not making it up? She, well, yeah, I could Just see to him. F with you. I could see him. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to say that he's a pathological liar, but you'd have to be to have told this many stories and swear that they're true. But the weird thing is it's not just him because his wife has the stories and I, I, you know, the kids have had weird things happen with them. If, if that's the case, then he and his wife and his kids all have it, all have this compulsion to make up stories, to lie, right? And that seems unlikely to me. Okay. Because, you know, they're, and they're religious folks, too, you know, where it's just like there are consequences for lying is there? No, the that religious folks are there religious folks that really believe that there's heavy consequences for lying? I would think that that would be part of being religious. Yeah. Like the 10 commandments there's don't bear false witness, but does that count is that lying or Oh, is it's that, absolutely lying, right? Or is that That's how we've interpreted it. Is that, that today, it, right? I don't know, I was just curious. I just think. I mean, bearing that. That... the other kind of bearing false witness would be I saw Goody Anklevich <laughs> dancing with the devil in the, see, the like, South Field. That's that's what false I would... witness, right? But... See, that's what I'm thinking is you know something like that. Whereas you know just because I've I'm seriously people lying is absolutely necessary for society to function. If you have to tell the truth to everybody all the time. You're going to have no friends. And if they're all telling the truth, they're not going to have any friends. There's not going to be any cohesion in society whatsoever. If you have to be like, hey, you do look fat in that. I'm sorry. Why don't, why don't, it's like that Geico commercial with Honest Abe Lincoln. <laughs> where his wife's like, Abe, do you think uh, this dress makes my backside look big? And he's like, ah, mm. well, Perhaps a little. <laughs> She's like, storms out in a huff. Even Honest Abe Lincoln, I'm sure, had to say no when he was asked a question like that. Where did that Honest Abe come from? Was that like a campaign nickname <laughs> that he had? I don't know. Because somebody told me that he was an independent. He was the third party 
nominate. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. And yeah, I mean the Republican Party when he was the candidate or whatever. I think he was the first Republican ever elected to the presidency because I think it was basically a new party at the time. Well, was it the Democratic the Party and the Whigs or something? Yeah, something like that. I don't remember what they were, but anyway, sorry. Uh, back to your. Uh, is he if he was lying? He's religious, folks. So I it just it it seems like guilt would have them say, "Hey, confess," you know, later. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I when I told you that that I really liked the Transformers films, I didn't really like them. I, I'm sorry. I, I I I'm trying to come up with a really really good lie. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, as far as my mom goes, I I guess. She could have made up that story so I'd have something to tell on my podcast. <laughs> but it's just but not really the, my mom's what personality. What if the plunger had just been put back in a weird way and just happened to fall? While she, and it would be more likely to fall like as she passed because there'd be a, a passing breeze or like the vibration of her footsteps or whatever is what's going to make it finally tip. You know what I'm saying? It's... Okay, well, that's the, that's the skeptical point of view, and that <laughs> makes sense. I mean, yeah, of course, you, the, the vibration of walking past it is going to make there be some kind of movement that wouldn't happen if... Uh, but again, uh, if you're listening, the, the sounds and the stairs or whatever, we didn't make those up. We didn't imagine them. But I guess it's up to us to interpret them. And right. We could, could we interpret them as just the wind or as a smilodon in the grass. Well, we're still in the house. We've been recording all this time. And we haven't fled. <laughs> so I guess we don't have that sixth sense of flight as, you know, with the, the creepy sound. But I feel like we've reached the end of our episode and, and I, I wanted it to be more. I wanted it to be. Kind Did, of spectacular. I wanted it to get people talking and be like, "Oh wow, this is this was awesome." Thank you guys. But and you're so. Are you sure that your uh, aunt never called? Never. Is you, is your phone turned off or on vibrate it's not or something? Off. It's shit. Two missed calls. Just a second. Damn it. Okay, eight thirty four, and then nine o three. There were two calls. And it's her number. So, crap, she did call. And Oh, there's a voicemail. Okay. Can we listen to the voicemail? I We brought the good mic, so I would hope we could. Okay. Isn't that the point? Um, I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, don't ask me, man. It's your phone. <laughs> I know how to use mine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put it on speaker. New message. Hey Rich, this is Charlene. Uh, you wanted me to call you at 8.30 and it's quarter after nine and you didn't pick up. Um, I hope you're still at the house and that everything's going all right. I don't know what going all right means to you guys. If something scary happens, that would be horrible to me, but to you two, is it just you and your friend there? Um, anyway, I'll call back in like 10 minutes, but I've got to be up early tomorrow, so I can't do this much later. Sorry. Bye. Well, that sucks, because I was going to tell that story. Message okay, silence. New message. Hey, Rish, it's Charlene again. Um, you're still not answering. The phone's ringing. Maybe you're down in the basement. Which means... I don't know what that means. Anyway, you wanted me to call and tell you about the experiences I've had in the house. Something you could use in your little radio show. So, should I just tell it to the machine? I guess that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I didn't know about the history of the house, but over the years, I had so many weird moments when John finally told me about it, I wasn't really surprised. Um, the first time I remember something weird happening was that I was home alone and I walked through the living room and I noticed the door was open, the front door it was open and I went down and closed it, but... I looked out front to see if John was home early. He wasn't. So I closed the door, went back into the kitchen, and was just cooking. Um, I even remember what it was I was working on. It was this breaded tuna casserole for Sunday dinner. John loves tuna casserole, but me, not so much. 
Well, I heard a sound in the living room and I said, Honey, is that you? But nobody answered, so I sort of stuck my head in the living room and it was empty. But the front door was open again. So I went down and closed it and locked it this time. But as I locked it, I was sure, absolutely sure, that someone was in the house with me. Actually, I thought it was John. He was playing some kind of trick or just like in the garage or something. Um, I turned around and there was nobody there, but I heard something in the kitchen, somebody in the kitchen. I walked in and of course it's empty, but the refrigerator door was open. I swear just standing open, like I let it open myself. And maybe I did, I think. It's part of what living in the house was like. I would sort of justify to myself that these weird things that happened were just me being forgetful. Like when you set your keys down and they're gone and you hunt all over the place for them and then there they are where you set them down. You never think, oh, somehow they were actually gone and now they're back again. You think, oops, I'm such a dummy. I didn't see them and they were right in front of me. It's a pretty good comparison for what living there was like. I'd hear sounds, doors closing, doors opening, footsteps, the TV turning off, um, the milk spilling, lights being on when I didn't leave them on, that sort of thing. But I never thought, there's a ghost. I always thought, whoops, John, or later, the kids left that radio on again or moved the chair against the wall for some reason. Anyway, I feel kind of stupid leaving you like an hour long voicemail, so I'm just gonna tell you what happened that made me want to move. It was three weeks ago, maybe four. John's boss was getting remarried again, and he asked John to be one of the pallbearers instead of just taking groomsmen, not pallbearers. Jeez, that shows where my mind is with all this. Yikes. So John's out of town, and it's just me and the kids, and as I was falling asleep, I hear one of the kids giggling in their room. So I peeked in on them to tell them to go to sleep. And they are asleep. It's dark, quiet in the room, but who knows. Maybe kids talk in their sleep. Sometimes John does legal motions in his sleep. Your Honor, may I approach, and that sort of thing. Again, it's just me rationalizing what's going on in a haunted house. But I went to sleep and like, a couple hours later, um, I heard the door to my room open. I open my eyes, and I wait for one of them to climb in with me, but they don't. So I sort of looked over, and there's somebody at the foot of the bed. It's a kid, and I thought it was one of mine. So I go, honey, what's wrong? And the kid at the foot of the bed says, Charlie. My kids don't call me Charlie, they call me mom. Besides, I know my own kids' voices, and this was something else. Someone like uh, five or six, I'd say. I sort of froze there in the dark. Not quite panicking, but f definitely freaking out. The only other thing I managed to say was hello. Charlie, the kid sort of sings to me. Oh god, my blood went cold. I was so afraid and I wanted to look away, but ugh, at the same time, and I see this shadow standing there, this black shadow, like three feet tall, whatever height a little kid is. Um, I don't make a sound. I didn't even breathe for a minute. Even when it took two steps towards me and the dim light from outside, the street fell on its face. Except it didn't have a face. There was just like, there was nothing there. Ugh. My body clenched up, like when you get a shock from the hairdryer with wet feet, and I trembled. Then I was gasping and like sort of crying, and the kid was gone. It didn't turn and leave or run or walk away. It was just not there anymore, and I was alone in the bedroom. It was a ghost, I guess. I, mean, I don't know what else to call it. Well, I'm not stupid. I told your uncle I wasn't staying in that house another night, and by the time the sun came up, I had packed two suitcases and started one for the kids. Oh, he tried to talk me out of it. He told me I'd imagined it. He told me I ate something and it affected my dreams. But I gave him the look my mother used to give my dad when she smelled beer on his breath. It's a very effective look. 
And eventually, he sort of deflated and told me the whole history of the house. That there'd been murders there. The only reason we'd been able to afford it was because some guy had killed his family and himself, and nobody else wanted to buy it. I think if you talked to him, he'd have stories, too. Stories of his own that he felt like he'd keep to himself in the years that we'd been living there. Um. <sighs> okay. I guess I did my part, even though you didn't pick up. No worries, I kind of preferred it this way. Feels like I'm talking to myself instead of some idiot man-child with a radio show. So, um, call me back if you really need to, but I hope this is enough. Goodbye. Oh, wait, one more thing from that night. Um, I have no idea why I dwell on this more than I have to, but the thing, a ghost, in my room that night. It said something else to me. Something I didn't understand. Um, I still don't. It said Bangunin. Bangunin? I don't know. Maybe I imagined that part. Bye. Uh, uh, okay. Now tell me this. Are like the hairs on your arms and like back of your neck and whatever like kind of standing up? Oh, absolutely. Holy crap, dude. I... What, okay, now, what the hell is Bangunin? Do you know that word? No, I don't. She must have... I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was like the old man in my room or whatever, and she just dreamt this. Yeah. Maybe it's like the word dune, Steve, and it just has multiple meanings. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, well, I feel like that story is a perfect way to end the show. I, I'm, I kind of wish that I had somehow... I, she must have called while we were walking around. I don't know. But but there we go. I hope you could hear it fine, her telling the story. I want to thank her for calling. <laughs> thank you for doing this tonight. Um, okay, well, we want to thank the Kolakowskis for their help. Uh, the, the music that you heard at the beginning of the episode, Kolakowski produced for us. I think that was really neat. And uh, is this produced under Creative Commons attribution, non-derivatives? I guess no everything that we do team. is. So, no, yeah, no taints I shaved, allowed. I shaved my CAC 3.0 <laughs> license and explain to the people what that license means. It means you can share it with anyone, but you cannot change it or sell it. That's right. Believe me, we know that from experience. Well, that sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> um, this has been our Halloween episode. Hmm, now my voice is effed up. And yeah, I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, I'm a little freaked out, but mostly just because of that story. I... Yeah, the story was better than the time that we spent here, unfortunately. I mean, we heard creaks and clunks and, I don't know, plungers falling over in the other room or something. <laughs> but No actual evidence of, uh, yeah. of Supernatural with us today, guys. But uh, I thank you for listening, and maybe we'll do this again next year uh, on the the. the hollowed out burned remains of, of this house <laughs> but uh, I've been Rich Outfield and I've been Big Anklevich happy Halloween I wish I had a chalupa, I did one here with you. Everyone around me could have a bite or two. I love chalupas, do you love chalupas? Chalupas are good. I could have chalupas, I would want chalupas right here in the woods. We could have a chalupa party, everyone could come. You could come and you could come, but not Prince Cryden, because he is scum. I have on good authority, scum. I don't know how to end the song, but chalupa's fun. <laughs>